morning. I'm uh, Steve Gregoire. I'm the manager of the Southbridge Water Department. I'm here with uh, Steve Cheney, our chief operator, and uh, Councilman Rick Nash. We're here to give you a tour uh, of the water facility here on Breakneck Road. Um, this facility was built in 1999, um, so we're approaching our 20, this is the 20 year mark, um, and we wanted to give you a tour of, of where your water comes from here in Southbridge. So the, the process all starts in our raw water room. Uh, our raw water room, we have two available sources. We can use uh, vertical turbine pumps to lift water out of reservoir number three, or we can use a gravity line uh, out of reservoir number five. That's the source we use in the summertime. When the water in reservoir three warms up, we switch to reservoir number five. The water is much cooler, much higher quality, much deeper. And by running on a line that's gravity due to elevation, we see about a, a $3,000 a month savings in electricity. Um, so it's a great source. It gives everybody in town much better water to drink during those hot summer months when we tend to have taste and odor complaints. Steve, can I ask you a quick question about your vertical turbine pumps? When you're running on that particular reservoir, those pumps are reliable. We have backup generator to ensure that we can always deliver water through the plant and into the distribution system. What about those pumps? Are they uh, near their life expectancy? Are they continuously maintained? What sort of PM goes on and how old are those pumps? Um, Steve, I'll let you handle this one. Well, the pumps are actually um, fairly new, newly rebuilt. Um, we have three pumps for redundancy. Uh, Two of the pumps have just been rebuilt. They were original to the building of the, um, of the facility. So they were at end of life uh, this last couple of years. So we had them rebuilt. Um, we've seen substantial um, increase in productivity because of that. And the third pump was uh, put in in 2012 when the uh, facility was upgraded. Um, we do maintain them. We grease them regularly and we check the, uh, check the bearings and the, uh, and the seals uh, regularly as well. It sounds to me as though we're well ahead of the curve when it comes to preventative maintenance. We have good equipment to ensure that we can always deliver the product when we're on that reservoir. Sounds great. Yeah, when this facility was built, we instituted a pretty aggressive preventive maintenance program. Um, the maintenance schedule here is set up from weekly to monthly to quarterly, semi-annual and annual. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty aggressive and pretty well documented the kind of PM we do to make sure that a 20-year-old facility still runs as good as it did when it was built. The explanation on the raw water intake, I can see that around us and near us are the chemical storage tanks. I hear metering pumps and I see mixers. Can you walk us through the next step? Sure. Like we said, after um, the water comes in from the reservoir, uh, whether it's gravity fed or pumped into the filters, um, we need to coagulate um, the stuff that's in the water, basically particulate matter and, uh, and any dissolved and suspended solids that we can try to get out. Um, so we'll add coagulants to the water. Um, to make the coagulants work better, we'll adjust the pH. Um, so that we have uh, the optimum pH for the coagulation to take, um, take, po uh, take place. Um, other than that, we're going to add uh, sodium hypochlorite to disinfect the water, which actually happens a little later, but it is stored behind us. So we also add ammonia to the water, so it helps with disinfection um, so that it can last longer through town. And again, that's added at a later point in the process. Steve, could you elaborate just a little bit for me? Um, I, don't, I don't know what everyone in the general public knows about water and source water, but what sort of suspended or dissolved solids are in our source water? Sure, there's, uh, there's a lot of organics in the water. There's um, iron and manganese uh, that we take out of the water. There's um, color that's in the water that we have to take out. The coagulant we use um, is good for taking out color, not so good for things like manganese, uh, but those are things that we address. We're always trying to optimize the way that we treat the water. Um, not only daily, but seasonally and yearly, because it changes every year. Um, so optimization is uh, what we're here for. Guys, thanks for the tour today. I appreciate the explanation on chemical addition, chemical storage. Now we've moved over to corrosion control. Can you tell us what goes on here? Sure, sure. Uh, Rick. What we have behind us is the uh, fluoride uh, setup. So it's a saturator. We add uh, 
um, crystallized fluoride to a, a tank that adds water to it and makes a saturation, and that's how we add the fluoride to the water. Uh, behind that is the corrosion control setup, and that's uh, day tanks of phosphate. So the phosphates will also will not only coat the pipes, but they'll also sequester um, any iron and manganese that are in the water up to a certain point. So it makes the water uh, look and taste better, plus it keeps um, the pipes coated so when you have things like main breaks out in town and there's dirt in the water, it'll it'll grab that dirt and make it so you can't see it and keep the stuff from coming off the pipes when they do get ruptured. Um, this is stuff that uh, keeps the water safe from any uh, contaminants that are in the distribution system. So we're, uh, we're on the second level of the plant now, up on our uh, three water filters. We have three filters. Uh, two of them were part of the original build in 1999, and the third unit came in in 2012 during our upgrade. During that upgrade, the original fil two filters were retrofitted with newer technology. So now all three filters are matched. They're only seven years old. Um, and these are a, a Siemens Trident filter. It's an upflow clarifier and a downflow filter. The clarifier uses a mixed media uh, I'm sorry, the Upflow Clarify uses a plastic buoyant media um, and it uses a process called absorption where the particles that we created during the coagulation process from all the chemicals cling to the outside of that plastic buoyant media. Um, the clarifiers do 80% of the filtration work. The actual filters themselves are a mixed media downflow filter and they capture the other 20% and really polish the water, take the color out of it and bring it right down to drinking water standards. Um, so inside the filter, the mixed media is an anthracite, a garnet, and a silica. And those three uh, medias have different sizes. So the smaller they get, the space between them gets tighter. And the more and more uh, fine the filter process becomes as the water goes down through the media. When it gets to the bottom, it goes through an underdrain, exits the filter into a clear well. And from there, it's almost ready to drink. It's going to receive chlorination, um, some final testing go through our lab, and then it'll be ready for the public to drink. Well, we've made it through the filter process, and now we're standing inside the office in the laboratory area. Uh, Steve and Steve, I wonder if you can explain what's going on in here for us. Sure. Sure. So basically what we have here in the lab is the 100-foot tap. It's, a, it's where we tap the system that goes out to the public. It's basically the first user on the system would be the first household um, on a distribution system. So we continuously monitor a bunch of parameters here in the lab. Um, they go right to the computer, um, the SCADA computer is what we call it. Um, so anything that goes out of parameters, uh, alarms out. Um, calls us so we can re remotely check it. We can get called in to address that alarm. Um, all those continuously monitored um, items are also checked daily by a licensed operator um, here in the lab um, with laboratory uh, procedures. So we start out by having continuous monitoring through the instruments that might be on the wall or you know, that are connected to the taps, but you also do uh, bench testing to verify and you do validations of the online instrumentation as well. Sure. All it, actually, some of our instrumentation is new, um, so it's a new technology. We're using lasers instead of light bulbs to measure turbidity. Uh, turbidity. Um, so that's a particulate matter that's in the water. Um, so now those have all the calibration and validation uh, procedures that you have to go through weekly. Um, so we have uh, PM schedules for all that, and our licensed operators check that daily, um, on, like you said, on the bench sheet, and then that's put into the computer, and, uh, and we um, save that um, for DEP reporting as well. Gotcha. So it's evident to me and probably for, for anybody else that might see this that we're taking every step that we possibly can to ensure that we're putting out the best product possible as far as water quality and safety is concerned. Absolutely. If, if any of the online monitoring is doesn't match up what our bench sheet is, we go through a calibration procedure to make sure we know exactly what's going out. And then we'll also use that um, data to determine whether we need to optimize our dosages on the chemicals or not. Because we can dose chemicals up to a certain point mm -hmm. and the water will filter great, but if you put more in, 
the water still filters good, but you don't know it until you check your residual chemical amounts. Those residuals will tell us whether we're overdosing or underdosing based on the particulate matter that's coming out of the filters. So we're always looking to optimize our dose. We want to put just enough in to treat the water so it's safe and, uh, and clean, um, but we want to put any more than we have to. Sure. No, that makes perfect sense. And I'm all about the efficiency end of that end. Um, Steve, Steve mentioned that you have licensed operators that perform some of these tests and that monitor the instruments. Can you tell us a little bit about your staff? Um, sure. In Southbridge, we have a staff of 11 field crew. Um, they're split into two different groups. Um, one is the distribution group, who those are the guys you see outside working on the hydrants, um, coming to your home to check the water meter or to replace the water meter, doing the water main breaks, that sort of thing. At this facility, uh, we've got four full-time staff. Um, there is somebody that works the facility 365 days a year. Uh, Christmas is somebody here, New Year's Day, so on and so forth. Um, everyone here holds um, DP Massachusetts water licenses. Um, there are water treatment and water distribution licenses. Mo many of our crew are trained in both. Um, but this facility here that's primarily focused on treatment, obviously, uh, this facility is a level four level facility. There's only four levels. This is the highest level the state has. And many of our operators are licensed at level four. Um, several of them are working their way up to level four. Um, but we have a heck of a staff here in Southbridge. Most definitely. See, that's evident to, to me by the awards that you have on the wall and that we hear about every so often. I know that we had um, Southbridge Water D Division and uh, White Water was awarded by Mass DEP, I think, again this last year. Yeah. But can you just elaborate a little bit more on certification and training? There, there, there must be some sort of effort to make sure that members of your staff get the training that they need for you know, forthcoming initiatives that are put out by the state or by the government. Are there, are there avenues by which everyone can continue their training? Um, we actually at Whitewater have a pretty aggressive training program. Um, several, of our, of our, several of our operators just finished um, a course at New England Waterworks, um, and these courses are required before you can even go and take a license. Um, every off-season, we have many different classes the operators take, ranging from safety to electrical hazards um, to uh, water treatment sort of uh, training. Um, this is all to keep their license current or to earn new licenses you may not already have. Um, but we're, we're constantly training up. I mean, I came up through the system and learned how to be a water treatment operator here. Um, we're lucky. We have a good company to work for and a good partner in the town. We'd like to thank the residents of Southbridge that are uh, viewing our drinking water treatment plant uh, tour today. My special thanks go to Steve and Steve and our Director of Public Works, Heather Blakely, the town manager, for allowing us in. Uh, I'd like to elaborate just a little bit and say that this is the third or fourth time I've been able to come up and take a quick look uh, and tour the facility with these uh, fine public servants and town employees, actually not town employees, but whitewater employees, that take care of our drinking water treatment plant and those that are out in the field taking care of the distribution system to provide clean, safe water for everybody here. Uh, it's always a pleasure to come up and see that our town is at least a little bit ahead of the curve, if not far ahead of the curve, when it comes to what we're doing to protect our source water, then also what we do to make sure that we're delivering a good product out into the tap that you turn off and on at your home through the faucet. Steve and Steve, this is a, a fantastic opportunity to come and see you guys as always. I appreciate the professionalism. I certainly hope that uh, members of the community recognize you when you're out there and give you the thanks that you deserve. You and your team do a fantastic job making sure that we have good water coming out of our taps and you do a great job preserving the, the public interest with the assets and the resources that we have here. Thanks to Max and Jim uh, and Cable Access for working with us to put this on today and we hope everybody has a good start to the new year. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Thanks. Thank you, everybody.